Petroleum or crude oil is one of the most valuable com commodities traded in the world. It accounts for slightly more than one third of the world's energy supply. Newfoundland Labrador's offshore oil industry has made significant contributions to the provincial economy in recent decades. It creates jobs, adds to provincial revenues, helps to curb out migration, stimulates consumer spending, and indirectly benefits other sectors of the economy, including real estate, education, and research, manufacturing, and re retail. But of course, we didn't get away with it without Quebec having to say in it. Three oil fields are producing crude oil in Newfoundland Labrador offshore areas as of 2008. Hibernia, Terranova, and White Rose. The fourth field, Ebron, is set to produce its first oil in 2017. Although the price of crude oil is traditionally high, which is beneficial, beneficial to the companies, it fluctuates daily and in response to a variety of factors. These include supply and demand, the world economy, environmental issues, and wars or other developments in countries that buy or produce oil. Oil workers discovered Newfoundland Labrador's first commercial oil field in 1979 after 13 years of exploratory drilling in offshore waters. Known as Hibernia, the oil field is located on the Grand Banks, about 315 kilometers east of St. John's. Construction of the Hibernia platform began in 1990. The development produced its first barrel of oil in 1997. The oil field holds about 884 million barrels of retrievable oil, making it the province's largest producing field to date. Because the province's oil reserves are non-renewable, each oil field will produce for a limited amount of time. Ebron is estimated to produce oil for 25 years, Hibernia for 20, White Rose for 15, and Terranova for 10. The oil and gas sector directly employed about 2,851 workers in 2007, which accounted for 1.3% of the province's labor force. As of the 31st of March 2008, between 88 and 94 percent of all workers at Hibernia, Terranova, and White Rose were residents of Newfoundland and Labrador, while almost all, between 95 and 99 percent, were Canadian. Short-term construction work leading up to oil production also provides much employment for local workers. At Bull Arm, Trinity Bay, for example, about 5,800 laborers helped to build infrastructure associated with the Hibernia development. 125 Here's some insight dollars. from Rick Mercer on the, the whole oil deal. In the Gulf of Alaska and the North sea. Remember, being in junior high, when they wheeled in the TV sets so the entire classroom could sit there and watch as Brian Peckford, the Premier of Newfoundland, held up a beaker of oil and announced that the days of being a have-not province would soon be over. And the entire class burst into laughter because we knew what we were we were the poorest province in Canada and if you ever forgot that all you had to do was wait five minutes someone would remind you we also knew if there was ever any money in this offshore oil racket somehow Newfoundland would get ripped off of its profits and now here it is 20 odd years five premiers later still no deal we had a deal we had a really good deal we had a deal with Paul Martin in the middle of the last campaign Martin stood up and said that Newfoundland should be able to receive one 100% of its oil revenues, no ifs, ands, or buts. And then, as if the gods of cruelty were watching, it lasted all of five minutes, about as long as it took for Newfoundland to vote liberal. And then the people at the Department of Finance started to hear rumors that maybe Newfoundland wouldn't be so poor all of a sudden, and they panicked. And now there's a new deal. And in the new deal, Newfoundland gets to keep its profits, but only as long as they remain poorer than Ontario. Apparently, the notion that the poor, ignorant Newfoundlanders could someday be as good as the crowd in Ontario is so offensive that safeguards have to be built in to ensure 
that God forbid this could ever happen. And Newfoundland is supposed to go along with this? Mr. Martin, I don't know much, but I know this. That is never going to happen. Because if stubborn paid money, Newfoundland would be rich. So come on, Paul, honor the original deal. A deal is a deal. Newfoundlanders know that. We've seen enough bad ones to last a lifetime. Oil is a great benefit to Newfoundlanders and the economy, but like all natural resources, it has a downside. The pollution, both through the effort to get the oil out and the ways of extracting the oil, has effects on the wildlife found on the offshore of Newfoundland and the coastal creatures as well. Here is an animation provided by David Suzuki showing the effects of a spill from Old Harry, an oil field on Newfoundland's west coast west coast would have locally. The black spot is the oil on top of the water. And the red is the shores directly affected by the oil at which the oil will collect. And here is the green area where the ocean floor has been affected and also the surface by the oil. As you can imagine this would have a big impact on our local fishery. Cougar Helicopters Flight 91 was a scheduled flight of the Cougar which ditched on the 12th of March 2009 and is also an example of the bad side of the offshore oil development. The workers face death every workday on our unforgiving Newfoundland waters and the danger with them, even in transporting. I'm sure you've all heard of this tragedy and just to show you this is an animation showing the final descent of Flight 91. And this was not guessed or nothing. This is all exact data from the black box on the helicopter. And all lives, were, except for one, were lost on this tragic day. And here's a photograph of the actual piece that was damaged on the helicopter. It was stripped pinion teeth, which led to her crash. The Ocean Ranger. Another example of the dangers. It was thought to be unsinkable, such as the Titanic. But that was not the case. It sank on the 15th of February 1982 and there were no survivors. Winds and 110 foot waves. The Ocean Ranger, now drilling in the Gulf of Alaska, is the most advanced semi-submersible in existence.